In order to understand the M2 Nano, we're going to go over some of the hardware involved. So uh, this is the M2 Nano board uh, that you all know and love. Now there's a few main chips here. This is the serial chip. It's a CH341A. Uh, sometimes it comes with Bs or blanks, but this just takes in the USB signal and passes it on to the other chips. That's all it processes is USB. This is the LHY chip. It's an 8051 processor. They came out in uh, 1980. So this is a 40 year old processor that does all the rastering that you need at full speed. These are the stepper chips. These are sort of mid-level uh, Allegro A4988s. They are nothing special, but that's basically all the chips on the board. Now, what you won't notice about this is memory. You won't notice a fast processor. You won't notice anything else. Th this is everything on the board. It doesn't do anything else. So how does a couple bucks worth of chips and a processor from the early 80s run rasters at a high speed? The answer is, essentially, bytecode. The processor doesn't do any math. All it does is flip switches. It turns the laser on and off, and it turns the stepper from going one direction or the other direction and sends ticks to it at a particular speed. The speed is a countdown value between ticks, where the processor ticks are counted up until enough of them have passed that it sends the tick out to the stepper chip. The speed of the ticks is just a fraction of the processor ticks. This is why speed codes configured for other boards in the same family can produce invalid speeds. The stepper chips natively have a forwards and backwards, and all the processor does to control the directions is to turn on and off the stepper chips and change the direction of the chip from forwards to backwards, much in the same way it turns the laser on and off. The entire board is controlled by flipping these states without math. The processor doesn't even store these states itself. They're stored in the other chips. The distance the laser is to travel is stored in the processor in two registers, one for the X value and another for the Y value. The ticks happen until these values reach zero, going whichever direction the stepper chips are set to go. After it reaches zero, it processes the next command. So what are the LHY micro GL commands? They're ASCII text, usually one character in length. Lowercase ASCII values are distance. This is just the number of times the stepper should be ticked before moving forward to the next command. The values of, are summed together of the lower bits of the ASCII characters. These are simply combined together into whatever register was active. There's a couple special characters here. For example, pipe Z works like 51. The pipe counts as 25. The Z in this case counts as 26. However, Z alone counts as 255. You can also send a three digit value like uh, between 000 and 255, which counts as whatever value it is. The I command does initialize. It sets the machine to the initial state, deletes any buffer, and any commands currently in the stack are deleted. It basically resets the processor. The direction flags, RL and BT, this does the plus Y and minus Y direction flags. So it sets the stepper chip in either the forward or backwards position for both the X uh, stepper motor chip and the Y stepper motor chip. And when you set the RL flags, it will suppress the X stepper motor chip. And if you set the BT flags, it will suppress the Y stepper motor chip and only send the ticks to the stepper motor chip that's selected. One of the oddities of this is it seems like the value L and R and T and B would be left and right and top and bottom. But all these directions are wrong. It's as if you're laying underneath the laser with your head at mirror two and your feet at the controller board. And if you picture it like that, then you have the directions correct, but anything else is wrong. The next command we have is M. In program mode, it performs a 45 degree move in the direction of the last set direction flags. So whichever way the uh, stepper motors are set to go, M will go in that direction. It doesn't set either stepper motor flag directly. 
We have the D and U commands. These are probably down and up. Uh, D does laser on, U does laser off. Uh, these can be triggered in both program mode and uh, rapid mode. Now the program speed mode uh, requires that a speed code be set. It's the period of sub ticks between ticks uh, to send to the stepper motor chip. Uh, it provides the speed. Uh, it's stored in two uh, three digit numbers between 000 and 255 and then an acceleration code, which is either a one, two, three, or four. Keep in mind, since we're using an eight bit processor, the 000, the 255 is just an eight bit number. The first one loads the high value and the second one loads the low value to make a 16 bit number. After the speed code is set, uh, command S1 followed by E uh, triggers the program speed mode. So after this, it'll be in uh, speed mode and you can use commands like M that previously aren't available in rapid mode. The other two commands related to the speed code. The first is C. This usually appears before the V command. So you do CV in the speed code. Uh, if there's a second C after the speed code, it drops the speed to about one twelfth of what it would be otherwise. The other command is G. Uh, this is never used with the C command. Uh, you can set either one or two G values. If one is set, it'll be used for both the forward and the back swing for of a raster. It's the step amount in the Y direction when switching from right to left and from left to right. The Y direction goes in whichever direction is set on the Y stepper chip. If two G values are set, the amount of the step is different when going from right to left than from left to right so that you can do unidirectional and bidirectional uh, rastering. When leaving program speed mode, there's two ways of doing this. Either you use at NSE or FNSE. The at resets the value so that you can set a different speed code. And the F makes the board send a finish signal when the buffer is completely empty. The P command is pause resume. It's sent in real time and it isn't put into the command buffer. If two P commands are found in the same packet, it causes the device to home. So the typical home command is IPP for reset and then uh, home the device. There is no memory on the M2 Nano other than a tiny amount of 128 bytes on the processor. This is where all the commands yet to be executed are stored. This is the command buffer. The protocol for communicating with the M2 Nano through the CH341 chip is that data can be sent, but also the chip status can be read. These are the pinouts from the LHY chip. It provides a tiny amount of information in a single status code. 206 means OK, data can be sent. 238 means busy, can't accept the packet right now. 207 is an error code, usually CRC error. Uh, 236 is finish means the uh, buffer is completely empty. Uh, 239 is a power code, insufficient power. This provides a tiny but powerful protocol where constantly checking the status can determine when more data can be sent. And the data is sent as room on the chip becomes available. In effect, this is using the computer sending the data as the memory for the device. This works perfectly except in those rare cases when the commands being sent are executed so quickly that the buffer becomes empty before the protocol allows more data to be sent. This results in stuttering. It's a combination of the small buffer size and the speed at which that buffer is executed. So a series of very quick commands while the laser is moving rapidly can cause stutter. In addition to using the host computer as memory, the commands cannot and do not do cut planning or line drawing or any of the traditionally required processing operations. All of this is done by the host computer and is converted into commands which are in effect a stream of state switches. This is why the M2 Nano can run without memory in a 40 year old processor with a couple bucks worth of chips. It doesn't need to do any math or interpret G code or anything beefier than adding or sending a signal. The same protocol could be implemented on our Arduino and allow it to raster faster than the stepper motors could possibly go. The streaming protocol basically makes the host computer do all the work and the M2 Nano simply serves as an interface board that does no work itself. Thanks for watching.